Welcome back to Element 14 Presents. I'm Adam. I've been wondering, how hard can it be to use PID in robotics? Let's find out. I've been interested in robotics for a really long time, and I've spent a lot of time on relatively basic robotics. Um, an example are all the Halloween animatronics I work on. It wasn't until recently when I took a controls class that I learned about PID. And you may be thinking, what is PID? Um, PID is representing a proportional derivative integral controller. And what that is doing, it's allowing advanced robotics. Say a robot that's balancing on one wheel, or I've seen a project where you have like a platform and a ping pong ball bouncing in the center and it has to change in order to keep it in the middle. That's an example of a project that's using PID to do these really advanced robotics. But I am really scared to take on something that, that challenging. So what I wanna get started on is a basic self-driving car scenario. A car that maybe wants to move one meter and we want it to be able to accelerate and deaccelerate in that time and hopefully without any overshoot. We, want it, we don't want it going past a meter, especially in a real self-driving scenario. We don't want it going past the line. That'd be bad. So we wanna make sure we wanna have almost no overshoot and we wanna just accomplish that goal. I'm gonna briefly go over my, uh, my rough design for this project. And something I, I will add is that you might be like, wow, this is a lot of parts for this project. At least all kind of laid out in AutoCAD. And yeah, I'm pretty pleased on how much I was able to iterate on this project. Some of it was required, some of it was for fun. For instance, so this is generally what it's gonna look like. I think this is my final model. And we're gonna have a motor here, a motor here to do the left and right side. They're gonna be pretty beefy motors. Um, I got 120 RPM. Um, I think they draw 12 watts a piece. So I might just run a cable because I don't really want to worry about the battery and power management with that, with 24 watts going to motors. <laughs> so we might have to deal with that in another way. Um, but that's going to be driven by a, um, a motor driver, which will go right here. And then the Arduino Minima, the new Arduino Minima will go right here. And then for the input for the PID, we're going to have an ultrasonic sensor at the front. And I took the opportunity, this took a little extra time, but I enjoyed it. I noticed, uh, this is like the first time I tried to mount it, that, you know, an ultrasonic sensor, it looks like eyeballs. So I wanted to make a little face and that's what I did. Um, I hope this turns out well once we print it, but it should have an eyeball here, an eyeball here, and then a smiley face. So a little happy robot. We also have a hole for some wire management. And lastly, um, you might be thinking like, huh, <laughs> is this only a two wheel uh, robot? And no, we actually will have a third wheel. It's gonna go right here. I found a really cool caster mount on Thingiverse and it worked really well for this project. So I kind of incorporated that into my design and they will mount right here. I was also pretty pleased that every part on here, the ultrasonic sensor, the eight screws for the motor, eight screws for the other motor, um, motor driver and Arduino and the caster, they all are using M3 screws. So everything's using M3 screws, all metric, and hopefully that means that I will not have to hot glue anything or um, maybe cut anything. So this is very exciting that hopefully all these, this will work really well. And I tried to test all these individually by doing like little parts. Cause for instance, I got all the screw holes for the motor, uh, the Arduino and the ultrasonic sensor just from online documentation. But the, um, the motor driver, I guess they didn't have that. I found other documentation for just making the motor driver work, but nothing on the actual dimensions. So I had to kind of figure out exactly where those screw holes were. So that took a lot of printing out on paper, but um, hopefully because of all the iterations I did, um, this, will, this will work out. This will be one final print after lots of smaller prints like little testers, um, hopefully this will turn out really well. Part of this, we're going to have used some big tires. I also tested these mounts, um, these tiny little prints, so hopefully the big one will work out well. And this will just attach to the motor. It honestly, I don't think it needs a screw, so that's exciting. It'll just be able to snugly fit on the motor shaft. Um, and that turned out well. And um, <laughs> yeah, plastic on like hardwood isn't great for a tire, I've learned. So we're going to, um, I think I made this a quarter inch thickness. Oh, 0.75. So three quarter inch thickness for the tire. And I actually found some electrical tape that's three quarter inch. So it'll be nice that I can just wrap it all around without um, it being a mess or anything. So I'll do some electrical tape around each of these to add you know, some friction to that. And I think that's about it. This took a lot of time just <laughs> iterating and making it all like really fit well, but I'm hoping this final design will look quite well. Yeah.
All right, I don't know if I would call this attempt two, maybe attempt one and a half. I've been frustrated for um, a little bit on the last attempt because I've been changing the constants and the constant, you know, ki, kp, and kd values, and I'm not really getting what I want. So I've been told that you could, you know, throw code problems into chatbots and that maybe you can get something out of that. <laughs> so I asked chat GPT, I said, write an Arduino code so that a robot will turn both motors till it reaches 10 centimeters. Please use PID. Uh, there's an ultrasonic sensor at the front of the robot to get the input of distance. And I'm looking at it. It honestly got pretty close. And I'm, <laughs> I'm very impressed. I'm just going through this and it, it's similar to what I was doing. Um, but with some like obvious problems, which is why I'm not going to be trying the code on the robot. Um, for instance, I see that it did KP as one and then KI and KD as zero. And what that is basically saying is it's really not a PID control, then it's really just a proportional control, which is not really what we want, but I noticed that. So that means it's actually gonna get there like really, really slow usually. I also noticed that down here, the way that they're saying to stop, turn left, turn right, and even go forward is not how my motor driver works. And to be fair, I think I, I don't even think I've mentioned how my motors work, but it's not how it really works. I can't just say analog right to the pins and the motors will go. Um, you have to turn on, I think, two pins high and two pins low in order to either go forward or backward. And then you can do the analog right to get the PWM to set the speed. Um, so I thought that was interesting as like, those are obviously incorrect, at least for our, you know, our instance. But I also noticed some things that I didn't think about. <laughs> um, so that I, I can see uh, this as a benefit of like, oh, maybe this is an alternative to sending to someone else. Maybe they'll, um, you know, let me know if I mess something up. But I, I didn't think about uh, setting the PWM limits. That since uh, at least how this controller is working, or at least how I configured it, I was basically saying if you set a negative PWM value, um, my functions were going to go backward. And I see they also did that, which I didn't do. Um, so I'm glad it caught me on that. Uh, this is not how uh, my ultrasonic sensor is getting the distance. I think this might be for a different ultrasonic sensor. But I think the general logic is what I might try to implement because it's basically saying if the distance is uh, less than the target distance stop, otherwise do the PID. And I don't think I actually set that. So that might be part of my problem that I'm not just saying stop and stop doing PID if it's um, at the target distance or before it. So um, while I'm not going to use this chat code, it's definitely helped me some. So that's something. <laughs> Quick update. <laughs> so um, in the past, it, it's been acting really sporadically. It's been really confusing on why it's just doing random things. Um, but I realized that I'm thinking maybe the ultrasonic sensor has not had enough delay every time it gets another input. So I threw a 200 millisecond delay in the loop. So before it does anything else, it has to wait 200 milliseconds. And I, it looks better. <laughs> well, you're gonna see it does still like overcompensate on both sides. This is, I think, much more promising. Um, I'm gonna help hold the back just because it does um, seem to tip to the back if it's um, too fast. So right now, <laughs> well, you might be like, wow, that doesn't seem to be doing what you want it to be doing. Um, this is really close to where I like want it to go. Um, and this is working um, a lot better. We're gonna see how we can make it not overcompensate like that, but it's trying to stay here. <laughs> which is what I'm trying to get at here. I was wondering how hard it would be to use PID in robotics. And in my very basic scenario, I found it really hard. <laughs> um, there's a reason why it's called PID tuning. Um, it's almost an art form, figuring out what the constant values need to be to make your system stable and make it work. Um, and what I also learned was, especially in my system, is that there are a lot of other factors that might be affecting it 
that are not the constants. Um, for instance, you, you saw it kept tipping backward when it was trying to go backward. So I ended up having to just put a little bag on the back that, um, that had just some weight or it was, it was coins to weigh, to weigh it down and that helped out. I also found that you saw it kind of going forward and it would stop every once in a while. And I think that was because of the ultrasonic sensor, but I'm not too sure, but I have a feeling that it's not as reliable as I wish it was. So I think that's probably what was going on. But what do you think? Let me know in the comments below. I'll see you next time.